What's going on you guys? This is Brandon from Advancement Hockey Advising and today we'll be talking about NCAA versus U Sports Hockey and then we're going to figure out which one is the right collegiate hockey path for you. And as always before we dive into things here just a reminder to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell and share the video if you like the content. As always, if you share the video, not only does it help our channel grow, but it helps those hockey players and families out there that could really use it. So if you have a sec, shout out Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever platform you're on, we'd really, really appreciate it. And of course, if you want to reach out to us at any time, talk to us about anything, you know, you can feel free to comment down below or reach out to us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And last quick thing, as always, there's going to be timestamps throughout the video. So if you want to skip ahead to any section, you want any specific section you want to see or if you want to just go ahead and watch the whole video it's totally up to do you can do whatever you like so let's dive right into things here so the whole goal of this video here is just to shed a little bit of light on the similarities and the differences between U sports hockey and NCAA hockey there's a lot of similarities between them but there are some key differences that we want to talk about here and the whole reason why we're doing this is by shedding some light here it's going to allow you as a hockey player or as a parent to just have more information available to be able to make the best possible decision as to how you're going to move forward in your hockey career now before we dive into things and get really get into the details here i just want to note that you should only pursue these collegiate hockey paths if you really do value academics. If you don't value academics, I would say one, it's a total waste of time. And two, it's probably going to cost you a lot of money because obviously a lot of these institutions give out academic scholarships. And if your academics aren't great, you're not going to get great scholarship money. So altogether, I would say only pursue this path if you really enjoy academics and you really value them. Okay, so let's start with NCAA hockey. So basically NCAA hockey, all it is is the highest level of collegiate hockey you can play in the US. Now obviously there's different levels, NCAA D1, D2, D3. In hockey there's mainly D1 and D3. But the reason why I say highest level is that there's also ACHA and we're gonna get into that in future videos. But all you need to know is that NCAA is the highest level of collegiate hockey in the United States. Now the biggest topic that we have to cover here in terms of NCAA hockey is that if you played major junior hockey at any time, you are ineligible for to play NCAA hockey. Now there are exceptions, there are caveats to this rules that you know there's there's like gray areas and all this stuff. But if you want to know all the specifics and more information, we actually made a video called NCAA versus Major Junior Hockey that you can go check out right here. And basically it just covers all the nitty gritty, all the details and all that stuff as to, you know, if you maybe just play a few games of Major Junior, what that does and, and all those kinds of things. So, but in general, if you play Major Junior Hockey, NCAA probably isn't the path for you because you're going to be ineligible for at least a year. Now, in terms of caliber, I'm going to make it really simple for you in general it goes ncaa d1 is the strongest u sports is in the middle and then ncaa d3 is towards the end and obviously there's acha and stuff like that after but for the main three for ncaa or u sports that's kind of how it goes now obviously this is very very general right there's you know some u sports teams that can beat some really good ncaa d1 teams there's some NCAA D3 teams that are very elite that could be U sports teams and even some lower end NCAA D1 teams. So just saying that this is very general, but in general, that's kind of how it is. NCAA D1, U sports and NCAA D3. In future videos, we're actually thinking on, you know, making a video where it's going to, you know, kind of break down the different conferences, you know, which uh, are more um, high end, which are mid end, which are lower end. If you want to see that in the future, feel free to drop a comment down below and we'll definitely get to that. And the last big thing here that I want to mention about NCAA hockey versus U sports hockey is that it's actually initially quite expensive. Now, of course, there's a lot of scholarship money that can come into the picture that can really lower this cost. We talked about it in our past video of NCAA D1 versus D3 hockey, all the different types of scholarships and depth. But in general, the ticket price is quite high and it drops quite a bit depending on, you know, athletic scholarships, academic scholarships, financial aid and other scholarships available. All right. So moving on to U sports here. So U sports almost like NCAA is the highest level of collegiate hockey, 
but in Canada instead. There are other leagues available in Canada at the collegiate level, but I would say they're not as popular and they're not certainly not as high in caliber. And it's typically U sports that we look at when we talk about Canadian collegiate hockey. Now, the one really big pro about U sports is that if you played major junior, you can still play U sports hockey, which is a huge attraction for hockey players. And on that note, actually, a lot of U sports hockey players are players that played in major junior initially. Most of the U sports, I would say maybe 75 to 80% is made up of ex major junior hockey players. And then the minority from there is made up of uh, players who played junior A in good leagues. And the next big pro about U sports is that it's generally quite inexpensive for you know most Canadian and US hockey players. It's generally quite cheap. So overall, although U sports is technically a little bit you know lower tier than NCAA D1, I would say, it has some really good advantages. Like if you play major junior, you can go play U sports. If you um, play junior, a at a high league you know some U sports teams will take you and the biggest one of all I would say is it's quite inexpensive too so for players that can't really get good deals at the NCAA D1 level sometimes they look for U sports because it's actually usually quite cheap in most programs so U sports can definitely be a solid option if NCAA D1 isn't quite the right fit for you all right so now that I've given you information about NCAA and then information about U sports as well at the general level now we're going to go into different situations that you might follow into and I'm going to give you some general guidelines as if you were in this situation then which uh, path should you take now obviously these are going to be general guidelines you know as we always say speak with multiple hockey experts before making these decisions before forming conclusions and opinions right your situation is unique to you and you should definitely speak to an expert before making a decision all right so the first scenario is if you played major junior hockey in this case I would say almost always pick the U sports path, right? If you can't go straight to, you know, the NHL or a really high pro league, I would say going the U sports path is great if you value academics. Now, obviously there's exceptions to this, right? Like we talked about in our previous video, NCAA versus major junior hockey. There can be times where you just play a few games, you made a mistake, you go uh, and get an NCAA commitment and you redshirt for the first year, that means not playing any games, and then you play for three years. That's totally an option, but I would say almost always in this case, you want to go the U sports path. The next situation is if you're a good player or a late bloomer and you've really had not much major junior interest or none at all. In that case, I would say going the NCAA path is better because it's a longer road and allows you more time to develop. The one exception to this is if you're, you know, 17 or 18 or something like that and you are just crushing it in a good junior A league and then you start to get, you know, some major junior interest then and then you might get a U Sports package or let's say you're just crushing in the junior A leagues and you could go straight to U Sports without major junior. That would be the exceptions, but I would say nine times out of 10, you know, if not more, NCAA would be the right path for you in this case. All right, so the next situation here that comes to mind is if you're an older player that's playing in a junior A league that's decent, you know, to lower end, I would say in this case, NCAA D3 is probably the path for you. Not discounting your abilities or anything like that, but typically U sports teams will really go for players that either play major junior or that are really doing well in a high end junior A league. So if you're in a mid end to lower end junior A league, even if you're doing well, who knows, you could potentially get some U sports offers, but typically NCAA D3 is what you're gonna be looking at. And the fourth situation that comes to mind here, and this one is the most complicated, I would say, and is where you have uh, you know some interest at the major junior level. And I would say there's some situations that kind of come to mind here. But if you do have interest at the major junior level, let's dive into the different situations that could apply to you. Number one, if a major junior team has interest in you, but they don't offer you a good U sports uh, scholarship package. And then on the other hand, you have a good NCAA scholarship offer. Then obviously this one's kind of a no brainer, go NCAA. But on the other hand here is if they don't have, you know, they don't offer you a U sports financial package or scholarship package. And at the NCAA level, you have interest, but you don't really have any offers yet. Still at this point, I would say probably go the NCAA route because if you have major junior interest, if they're not quite giving you a great U sports package or none at all, and you have NCAA schools that are talking to you, chances are that you're going to end up getting a decent NCAA deal down the road. So I would say 
in my opinion here, I would probably lean towards the NCAA side, but obviously this, every situation is different here and it could be a little bit tricky. So definitely talk to an expert on this one. And the third situation that comes to mind is if a major junior team does offer you a great U sports package, but then on the other hand, an NCAA team also offers you a great scholarship package and a commitment. You know, which one do you choose? And well, this one's the trickiest, but it's the best problem to have here because you have leverage, you have multiple options of which to choose from. At this point, you got to look at, you know, okay, what programs are offering me things? You know, is it a lower end NCAA D1 program or is it a higher end one like, you know, University of North Dakota? And is it a program that you want to go to? Do they have what you want to study in? All those kinds of things, right? You got to ask yourself these questions. But obviously, this is a tough one. I can't personally tell you what to do in this point. We'd have to look at specifically what's being offered to you before making a decision. But again, I personally, if I had to pick one experience or the other, you know, major junior or youth sports, or NCAA D1, you know, if let's say they're both equal caliber offers, I'm a little bit biased. I would probably pick the NCAA D1 side of things, but obviously that's just me. Your opinion could be different. You know, you might like the major junior to U sports path, you know, better. It's all on the individual and it's all on the specific situation so obviously speak to an expert if you're in this situation because at this point it's a tough decision to make and you definitely need expert advice to make the best decision possible and to add to this too after you've spoken to experts you know thought about the pros and cons of each path follow your gut at the end of the day uh, as to which path you want to go if one path excites you more than the other go with that path you know i i would say almost always your gut is right so you know in those situations where you have you know a great problem that you're trying to figure out which path to go follow your gut that's the best advice that i can give all right so just a quick recap we covered the differences between ncaa and U sports in this video and then we just laid out a bunch of different situations as to which one to pick based on your unique circumstances so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and share the video. On sharing again, if you just take a quick second to share the video on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever platform you like best, it not only helps our channel grow, but it helps all the hockey players and families out there that could really use this information. So if you have a sec, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share this video. Also, if you had any questions pop up throughout this video, if you wanna reach out to us and talk to us about anything, feel free to drop a comment down below or even email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Last quick thing, if you're curious about what we're up to, if you wanna check out any of our other platforms, there's a link down in the description below that you can click and it'll give you nice access to everything. So if you're curious, feel free to click that link down below. And that's it guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on that next one.